Hey Dr. Marshall, this case is a perfect example of how much complexity and precision go into treating Achilles pathology. Also, the FHL tendon transfer with the speed bridge and stent along with the retrograde approach impressive work, you really went all in for this patient and the detailed explanation of your approach is super helpful, especially for those who are facing similar cases. And I also went through some of the comments. I remember uh, what Dr. Strash has said. For Achilles tendinopathy with brucitis marrow edema of posterior calcaneus, this is an effective choice. Well, that is such a great point. It really brings home how crucial it is to pick the right option based on the specifics of the case. It's all about getting that tension of the insertion. And Shams, Mini open approach really caught me eye too. I have worked them at two weeks with passive range of motion and they bounce back quickly. I love that mindset of getting the patient moving as soon as possible. It sounds like it leads to faster recovery with better outcomes. Also, the point Dr. Allen made about the FHL transfer being necessary in certain cases is spot on. His emphasis on checking for an anastomosis with FDL and using alternative transfers in women who might have a smaller FHL is such a thoughtful touch. And finally, the advice from Dr. Ney on how he rarely does FHL transfers anymore but loves using the speed bridge with gastroc. It's interesting to hear how preferences evolve with experience and it sounds like that combo gets great results. Also, I'm curious that how do you typically decide between doing an FHL transfer versus an MIS approach? Is there a particular rehab protocol you lean on for faster recovery? Well, Dr. Marshall, thank you so much for this detailed case. I'm sure it's going to help so many in the field.